let's talk about some of the highlights from uh, the down to earth edition of january and this focuses on mainly the issues of water scarcity issues of electric vehicles and plastic pollution that has been again one of the major focuses in the yojana january 2000 uh, 2020 as well so the first issue was globalization and the free fall of the for the free market economy now over the years we have seen that globalization has been slowly and gradually replaced by ultra localism that is a way of rebuilding the local community the local people setting the targets and the possibilities that government should work around for the local people so when we are talking about a well crafted globalization picture it has been severely affected post the recession 2008 and therefore we are focusing from a concept of globalization to deglobalization which is reducing the interdependence between nations reducing the integration between the nation states and working as a kind of ultra local market that could be seen so who actually become a winner in this scenario and who becomes a loser in this scenario is important when we say winner in this scenario we have the economies that have low labor cost and a good infrastructure to export however on the other hand uh, the losers would be those have a those who have a high labor cost in terms of production and a poor infrastructure to export so uh, that is where you have a difference that has been created the next is the issue of water scarcity and zero day uh, keep Uh, town in south africa had been a lot in news last year and it's believed that some of the metropolitans from india definitely it's bangalore and then you have other Uh, metropolitans that have been mentioned in this diagram which are on the verge of moving towards a zero day if we talk about the extremely high base level uh, water stress those are seen in qatar israel lebanon ja- israel and jordan so those are some of the uh, most prone areas now if we look on to a global picture we see most of the water being trapped in the form of uh, the ocean bodies however we do have water that is present as fresh water which is mere 3% of which you have nearly uh, two more than 2% which is trapped in the glaciers so what is used or available for consumption is less than 1% of which 98% is available as ground waters and only 2% in the lakes and the reservoirs so cape town has been severely affected due to water scarcity problem the crisis has been due to an unplanned urbanization that has been seen which has created water scarcity mainly in the urban areas and the metropolitan so india is one of the global hot spots in terms of the largest usage of water consumption and uh, a kind of large scale migration could further add up to the issues in future the next is the electric and the hybrid vehicles electric vehicles are those vehicles which are solely running on electric energy or electric battery so here the cost of the battery is higher because one battery cost around 60000 to 70000 for the life span of 2 to 3 years and it's nearly 30% uh, in terms of the cost of a electronic bike price that is seen and therefore the issue has been higher uh, in terms of uh, the cost that has coming up at the front go similarly uh, when it comes to hybrid vehicles it could be switched between a petrol or a diesel vehicle to a uh, electric vehicle fame scheme is a faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles in india so that that is one of the statistics that has come up from the government for the famous scheme and there is a kind of three pronged strategy to give a thrust to the sale of the electric vehicles and that's mainly pushing up the demands increasing the supply and creating a better ecosystem where you would have a much higher demand now before we launch these there have to have been the charging stations that are there you have 11 states in india which are actually encouraging the sale of electric vehicles uh, indian institute uh, of technology Delhi IIT Delhi has been working hard to bring in vehicles or combustion engines that can entirely work on hydrogen so that is another uh, technology that we are going towards uh, the next is the extreme weather and the climate collapse now over the years we have seen a significant change from 2010 to 2020 we have witnessed a series of uh, changes 
2019 was the year which had record breaking heat waves that had been seen across the nation uh, 2010 we saw cold burst in leh region 2013 we saw landslides in uttarakhand 2014 we saw excessive floods in the regions of jammu kashmir uh, similarly in 2012 we saw the hottest uh, days in the us history that were recorded and 2019 as we said was one of the years where nearly 144 nations actually displaced people because of the climate issues or natural disasters coming up so cop 16 by the united nations convention for climate change had been working hard for the developed uh, countries to build in a kind of agreement in terms of financial corporate cooperation technological help that could be seen and cancun uh, cancun agreement that was there ignored the targets of the greenhouse gas emissions that should not exceed 2 degrees Celsius and it also uh, talked about reviewing it on a uh, on a cyclic basis okay the next was the virtual world and the battle for internet now internet in 2019 completed 50 years of its journey there has been a significant switch in the kind of terms of internet uh, services that have been used from aol back in 1998 we have google at the top rankings and also we are talking about nearly 57 percent of the population that is now connected to the internet the average user spends nearly six and a half hours per day on internet you have nearly 3.5 billion population which is active on social media platforms united states has seized or has decided to seize the domain or shut down the websites in terms of uh, the territorial laws where it uh, it can use a kill switch to such uh, shut down certain websites which could threaten cyber emergency in certain cases uh, china also has a huge amount of active monitoring systems for blocking systems with every piece of luggage that is coming in and going out that could be seen similarly in india you have the article 69a which permits center to issue directions to block upon the public access to any information coming through the computer sources the next is antibiotic and feed resistance now this was something that was discussed in the last edition as well you have some of the bacteria resistant antibiotics that are here the name of these are really really important because this could be a direct question antibiotic resistance is due to the overuse of antibiotics and this is known as drug resistance it's difficult to control it at the same time so what happens during the antibiotic resistance is the effectiveness of the drugs or the chemicals that are going into gets reduced and it is seen that nearly 10 million population by 2050 could die due to antimicrobial resistance that could be seen uh, you have numerous reports that have been reported by by the government sources as well and similar issues have been seen in the animal population the next is the scarcity of sand now this looks really funny to hear but this is actually a concern what happens is sand has been highly used in construction activities india is the third largest country which uses sand for construction activities after china and us and because of which you have a lot of illegal sand mining that occurs now this illegal sand mining leads to drying of the rivers the destruction of the local ecosystems that have been seen and if you look on to some of the facts it has been seen that nearly 75 to 90 percent of the beaches would retreat uh, in the coming years in indonesia we have seen 24 islands which have already disappeared by 2000 and 100 you would have maldives that would no longer exist and nine out of the 10 beaches in florida are slowly and gradually fading away so those are some of the important statistics that we need to understand in order to see that sand mining has been the illegal use of sand has been dangerous to the ecosystem has been dangerous to the tourism to the uh, rivers that are drying up slowly and gradually and you have a huge lot of island groups that are being affected especially in the regions of indonesia where we have seen mainly the uh, seribu island groups in the jakarta bay which have been affected 
government had passed a rule in 2012 in india uh, the supreme court has talked about the environmental clearance which is required and must for all mining sites in india as per the directives we also have the environmental impact assessment through the environmental protection act in india now the next is agrarian distress now what has happened what is this situation this is a situation where the price of the agricultural commodities start to decline and the usual sources of the payment for the rent slowly and gradually disappear so this has affected nearly 440 million indians and brought about a situation of economic distress most affected households are from uttar pradesh followed by maharashtra and rajasthan you have higher amount of loans coming up a global downturn and demonetization are some of the major issues that have affected it and then you have the high incentive a short price for the paddy and the sugar cane uh, which was promised but that came out to be unsuitable and slowly and gradually we have seen a lot of people moving out of the agricultural sector from India due to continuous crop failures, little rainfall, higher drought periods and extreme weather conditions that have been uh, recorded. The next is Arctic rush and Arctic emergency. Over the years, we have seen melting of the glaciers from the Arctic Ocean. Now, the permafrost layer has been slowly and gradually thinning down. You have ice uh, blocks that are slowly and gradually moving away. And this melting of ice is creating an impact on the global economy. You have uh, eight Arctic nations, which are mainly the Russia, Sweden, Norway, Ireland, uh, Americas. Then you have the Finland, Canada and Greenland areas, which are uh, moving towards a rush to explore the Arctic waters to find out the oil fields uh, which are proven and unproven reserves of oil and so far you have uh, it's known that nearly 10% of the world's hydrocarbon reserves are seen in those regions so uh, taking out those reserves has been a kind of arctic rush that has been seen so you have numerous uh, hydrogen fueled uh, ships that are operating into the arctic the proportion of those have Im increased over the years which are creating more risk for oil spills more risk for climate warming and black carbon over the years that could be seen the next is the loss of species uh, reducing plant protection so what is the major issue it's in the terms of the invasive uh, species coming up the loss of the habitat that is seen uh, global warming pollution that is another issue chemical pollution overfishing affects nearly 80 percent of the fish stock and it creates over exploitation over the years so we have a huge amount of species nearly 2000 species that has been extinct so far a lot of species has uh, become vulnerable and many of those are on the verge of extinction so there is where we need to have a kind of global assessment on the biodiversity a report on the biodiversity and ecosystem services that could help us lay down uh, what is the exact scenario now the situation of unemployment in india uh, over the years we have seen a very high proportion of unemployment over the last 40 years or four decades that we have seen the OE, uh, oecd survey that has shown has seen the largest difference between the employment rates in men and women which is nearly 52 percent in india we have nearly 31 percent of the women participation in the workforce which is the lowest in the world and second lowest in the south Asia after Pakistan. So India has the second lowest proportion of women participation at work and we are in a requirement to create nearly 100 million new jobs in 10 years. So that's a kind of very huge picture that we aim for. The next is the issue of permaculture. Now this is a very unique concept. This talks about bringing in food along with fodder for animals, along with timber and fertilizer. So a kind of holistic development of a region. And this strategy was given back in 1970s by an Australian biologist which was who was known as Mollison. And thereafter it was spread into India and by 1987 it was expected or uh, it was a kind of uh, huge acceptance that was seen in the countries of India. So far this concept has spread to nearly 140 nations across the globe. The idea is to achieve more resilience, uh, less resources that could be used 
bringing in mixed cropping patterns dense nutritional foods cutting down the cost uh, creating lower maintenance cost and reduced watering and waste that could be seen so permaculture a very very important and probable question for your 2020 examinations the next is plastic pollution again a very important question for your 2020 so what happens is 80 percent of the uh, Plastic that goes into the ocean comes from land, of which you have 75% of the water waste of plastic that is uncollected. Only 25% you are able to collect it. Over the 2000 to 2009, we have seen the plastic proportion in oceans which has been... Uh, highest among the last four decades that have been seen nearly 300 million tons of plastic goes into the ocean every year which is equivalent to the total weight of the human civilization we have 8 million tons of the plastic that enter into the oceans every year and by 2050 you would have nearly equal number of fishes and plastics into the ocean so that's the amount of concern we have uh, this, this plastic is clear, uh, killing nearly 1 million birds, 1 lakh sea mammals every year and that's the proportion if it is not controlled it could go beyond district, uh, distinction or what we say as the 6 mass extinction that could be seen. So again we are aiming to reduce by 70% the amount of microplastics going into the atmosphere by 2025. Now microplastics mainly go through the cosmetic industries, through the tourism that is seen mainly in the uh, cosmetics things and uh, the fashion products that are seen. You also have uh, efforts that are being laid down by different nations for example germany is working on mangrove protection china is talking about environment of the marine ecosystem improving the water of the offshore areas and uh, eliminating any kind of illegal sewage going into the water bodies the highest proportion of plastic pollution the highest uh, contributor is Coca-Cola followed by Nestle and PepsiCo. So those three are the biggest contributor. The next is we require nearly six to eight hours of sleep every day. If there is less sleep, it is called as a sleep uh, uh, kind of sleeplessness situation or a sleep wake disorder. Now here are some of the reasons where you have a sleep disorders that could be seen. Now what is hibernation? Hibernation is uh, hiding away that could be due to three reasons. It could be due to the extreme cold conditions that could be seen uh, to save oneself from the uh, predators and to keep the food or in case of lack of food that is seen. So those are the three reasons for hibernation. Lizards are a good example that hibernate. On the other hand, you also have estivation. Estivation is an act where uh, the animals hibernate or they move into their holes during the summer months the extreme summer conditions and hibernation is usually during the cold months that are seen so that's a major difference then you also have a kind of uh, different aspects that have been covered across the edition one is the concept of lithium caps now lithium caps is an all electric cap service that has been used or originated from bangalore and now has uh, been into operation in the ncr delhi area nagpur is the first country first city in the country sorry to have a electric cap fleet that has been seen uh, indus and its tributaries have been most vulnerable water towers of the world that have been declared uh, sand mining as we said is highly um, a kind of uh, creating a scarcity of the sand and it's believed that nearly 18 kg of the sand is extracted per inhabitant on the planet that is seen. And also we also have the maritime safety organization which is talking about the safety rules, the concerns uh, related to shipping and the equipment so far. Uh, extreme weather conditions had been seen in the regions of Junjunu in Rajasthan. Uh, we also have the Indian Institute of Toxicology Research which has been doing significant efforts across to work on the antimicrobial resistant drug diseases and uh, many other issues in the uh, given period so those were some of the major highlights two of the most important three of the most important questions that could be seen from this edition is one on the concept of permaculture uh, the second is on the concept of e-vehicles and the concept of fame scheme 
COP25 definitely it was recent and upcoming so important but more importantly you have the issue of plastic pollution in the oceans and the destruction of the oceans because of the plastic pollution so those were some of the major highlights that you must cover for your 2020 examination we will be covering a series of mcq before your examination and definitely expected questions as always so stay tuned have a wonderful evening ahead